I'm so angry that I have the worst boss ever. Seriously, I hate him. Relax, relax. Why do you say your boss is the worst boss ever? Because he is. He never listens to anybody. He always thinks he's right. Um, let me tell you a little story, son. Maybe later you will understand. Once upon a time, there was a king who was obsessed with his appearance. Rather than worrying about the finances of his kingdom or training his soldiers for war, He instead spent hours dreaming about clothes. He spent all the kingdom's spare income on new clothes. And his wardrobe was so big that it was practically another country in itself. He never visited the theater or went hunting, except to show off a new outfit. And instead of the words, the king is in the council, the phrase, the king is in his wardrobe, was regularly heard. So the people of the kingdom wore all dirty clothes, with no hope of comparing to the king's fine outfits. The soldiers were left with sticks and rusty swords or weapons. And the king's council did all the ruling for him. This worked out quite well, as the council knew far more about ruling a kingdom than the king had ever shown an interest in. Things ran smoothly, more or less, until one dark day a pair of brothers came to the castle claiming to be skillful weavers. In fact, these men were no weavers, but tricksters. However, as soon as the king heard that there were weavers in the castle, he demanded to see them. My dear king, said the first brother, we have traveled through the whole country. And we have heard all sorts of stories about your fantastic outfits. You have, said the king, satisfied that his efforts were being seen. How wonderful! We have a proposal, said the second brother. We wish to weave you a beautiful outfit so that your fame might spread not only to our kingdom, but to the whole world. The whole world, said the king. Why, that would be a wonderful idea, wouldn't it? He turned to his council, who seemed less thrilled by this idea. If the other kings and queens hear that I have such an outfit, they will think we are rich to spend money on such things. They will surely not attack us. It will not just be great, said the first brother. It will be a magical. We can weave a magic thread that is only visible to those who deserve to see it. Anyone who is stupid or unfit for office will not be able to see the threat. The king was delighted by this. What a brilliant idea! Not only would his outfit make him famous around the world, 
it would allow him to see which of his men were unfit for office and distinguish between those who were wise and those who were foolish. I will waste no time, said the king. Tell me, what do you need to create this wonderful outfit? So the tricksters asked for two huge bags of silk and gold and a room to work in. There they set up two great looms and got down to pretending to work. They did not put any silk or gold into the looms. Instead, hiding it in their own bags, but they moved their hands through the air as if they were preparing looms. Then they worked the machines, making a great deal of noise and capturing much of the castle's attention. Even though the looms were quiet, empty, A few days later, the king wished to know how the two weavers were getting on. He had been inspired by his morning visit to his wardrobe amongst the rows of beautiful clothes. He found one outfit which was being eaten by moths. Furious, the king declared that all moths in the kingdom must be killed, and that anyone who failed to kill the moth would face death themselves. After calming down, the king realized that there were might not just be moths in his wardrobe, but moths in his council as well, men who seemed good and wise, but in reality were eating away. at the kingdom. So what better time to send his council to view the outfit in progress? The weaver's magic thread would soon tell if his men were unfit for office. First, he sent his minister to check up on the weavers. The minister walked in confidently sure that he would see the cloth without difficulty. However, he immediately found himself standing in front of an empty loom with the two weavers working away on the other side. My God, thought the minister, can it be that I am stupid? No, but in that case... I must be unfit for office. Dear minister, cried the brothers, pausing their work. Thank you for coming and checking on us. Come closer so you can see the cloth better. The minister walked forward, pretending to stare at the cloth. Tell us, do you like this design? And what about these colors? They spoke for a long time about the details of the cloth. Making up technical names for things and asking what the minister thought, he merely nodded and said that he thought they were beautiful. And to make sure they did not realize his lie, He asked for the names of the patterns and colors so that he might tell the king. Oh, and before you go, said the brothers, just as the minister was leaving. Could we have more silk and gold? We're running out quite quickly. So the minister gave the message to the king who gave more silk and gold to the tricksters, which went straight into their own bags. 
Satisfied that his minister was fit for office, the king sent an advisor to check a few days later. The advisor was just as confident of his ability to see the magic thread. And when he stepped into the room and saw the empty loom, he was gripped with panic. If I tell the king the truth, I will surely lose my head, he thought. So he made sure to stare at the loom and spoke loudly of how beautiful the cloth was and how he must tell the whole city about it. The weavers asked him plenty of questions. Pretending to be deeply concerned about the quality of the outfit, finally asking for more silk and gold as the advisor was leaving, the advisor announced the news of the magic cloth to the city, and rumors spread fast. Everyone was waiting excitedly to see the outfit so that they might distinguish which of their neighbors were foolish or unfit for office. Finally, the king decided that his moth-killing plan could wait, as he was eager to see the cloth himself. He went to the weaver's room with his council, and naturally, all they saw were empty looms, but nobody dared say a word in front of the king. The king himself was quite shocked when he could not see the cloth. Does this mean I am not fit to be king? He wondered. But how can it be? I have ruled so well all my life, but I wonder my council has always done most of the work. And isn't that the job of a king, to be a figure for the people to admire, whilst the carefully selected council does all the work? I must not speak a word of this, or... The kingdom will fall apart. So the king said the cloth looked wonderful, and clapped the weavers on the back, and told them he would give them as much silk and gold as they needed. The rest of the council laughed and smiled along with him, all commenting on the delightful colors and patterns, although each person seemed to mention a different color. Yes, yes, you have done a most excellent job, said the king. In fact, we must hold a parade. There we will show off the new outfit, and afterwards you will be knighted. The tricksters' mouths fell open. What an honor to be knighted, they cried. Our king is too kind. The night before the parade, the weavers stayed up working, burning hundreds of candles. Then they pulled off the cloth, cut it with scissors, and sewed it with needles. Although, of course, all they were really doing was cutting and sewing air. In the morning, the tricksters came before the king, holding up the pieces of invisible clothing, one by one. Here are your new trousers, my king, they said, and they helped 
the king into his invisible trousers. Here is your new scarf, my king, they said. And they helped the king into his invisible scarf. And also they helped the king into his invisible cape. The thread is so light that you will not even feel it. They explained why it is as light as air. The king cried. The weavers took the king in front of a mirror where he stood completely naked, but they looked him up and down as if examining a fine piece of clothing, commenting on how excellent he looked. Oh, but there is one problem, said the tricksters. Someone will need to carry your train. So the king ordered some of his men to stand behind him and carry his train. But, of course, they were just holding air. The parade began, and all the people of the city pushed into the streets and leaned out of windows to see the king's new clothes. Of course, there was really nothing to see, but nobody wanted to admit to being stupid or unfit for office. So the people cried out about how wonderful the king looked. Finally, a young girl saw the king and she could not understand what everyone was talking about. But he's naked, she said, pointing. The king is naked, the little girl's words spread like an illness and like moths to a flame the people all began to comment on the king's new clothes or the lack of them soon comments turned to louder and people began to openly make fun of the king it does not matter he thought to himself so the people of the city are stupid. What a surprise. I know I look excellent. When the parade was over, the king returned to his castle to find the weavers and knight them. But the two tricksters were nowhere to be found. Hello? Where have those two gone? They had disappeared the moment the parade had started. And so the king stood, naked, in the middle of his castle, never having felt so stupid in his life. Now, do you understand what is this story about? The king is like your boss. He always thinks he's right. And he doesn't listen to anyone, but soon he will be in a situation where he will look like a fool in front of everyone. So don't worry, son. Yes, that I feel much better now. I love that story. I want to hear another one, please. Well, that will only be possible if the people who watched this video wanted to. I hope you liked this story. If you could improve your English a little more, please subscribe to the channel and share this video with a friend. Thank you very much for your support. Take care.